This program is brought to you by Electrical Resistance. Electrical resistance cuts down on the flow of electric charge. But if it cuts down on the flow, why is it important when what we're trying to do is blast as much light and sound at you as possible? It's because resistance is controlling this picture and controlling the sound. To understand electrical resistance, you have to look at electricity at the atomic level. Electrons are like a gas of very tiny particles that can pass right through metals, but they don't pass through without some interference. It's something like the flow of water in a pipe being disturbed by dirt. If we could follow an electron as it passes through a wire, we would occasionally see it run into an atom of metal. When the atoms are hit, two things happen. The flow of electrons is reduced and the atoms are shaken up. The shaking atoms usually produce heat and sometimes light. That's how heaters work. Resistance in the coils of wire create heat when a huge current is passed through them. Because electrical resistance opposes the force that's trying to move the electrons and reduce their rate of flow, we can use the general resistance formula of force divided by rate to find it. In an electrical system, voltage acts like force, and the rate is the current. In other words, a volt divided by an amp is electrical resistance. Here's an example of electrical resistance being put to good use. Some welders press two pieces of metal together, then pass a large current through them. The resistance within the metal generates the heat that literally melts them together. A light bulb is simply a resistor that gets so hot it glows white. The amount of resistance electricity encounters depends on how far it has to go, but also on the size and the type of conductor it's passing through. For example, have you ever wondered why it is that you don't get a shock when you touch a car battery? It's because the resistance of your body is too high for the 12 volts in the battery to push the charge through you. Wires, on the other hand, offer very low resistance, so the charge will flow through them more easily. Like fluid resistance, electrical resistance depends on the size of the wire and its length. Tim Carvis is a technician who must keep track of electrical resistance to make sure that a very small electric charge covers a very long distance. This is a uh, cable TV head end. All the signals that we bring in come to this one wire here. What these white devices are, are trunk amplifiers. You see the same things outside when you're driving around. I'll open it up. What this does is take the uh, signals that we're sending into it and amplify them. Now you can think of uh, cable TV signals much like a uh, water or any kind of fluid in that as it's running down the pipe or in a cable, and in this case, it's going to slow down or in our case, reduce, reduce its level. Also with a cable system, you have your trunks, you have your uh, feeders, and you have your um, uh, smaller and smaller diameter pipes or cables in our case as it goes to the subscriber's home. So it, it's very similar to a, a water system. To show you what a cable system looks like graphically, I have this chart I can show you. This is a diagram of one of our towns that we serve. This is the cable system for the entire town showing the trunk runs. Right here is our head end, and this is a trunk cable, these lines here. Now what I point out is the little triangles are the locations of our trunk amplifiers, and the reason that they're spaced as they are is because of the resistance in the cable trunk it has dropped to such a point where we need an amplifier to boost it up again. And as you see, it goes up the map, and then we need this because somebody up here, if they didn't have amplifiers, would have no signal at all. They'd be looking at snow on their TV. Some resistance devices, like this dimmer, are simply long coils of wire wound up into a small space. When the current passes through only a small portion of the coil, most of it gets through to the light. 
Turning the knob directs the current through more and more coils, increasing resistance and cutting down on the flow to the light. In effect, it changes the length of the wire. The same thing is true for volume control. The rheostat is a resistor. Controlling the resistance in the circuit controls the current flow to the speakers. Electronic circuits have become so small that it's impossible to put coils or knobs inside. So the flow of charge through the circuit is controlled by changing the type of material. Each of these tiny components has a specific resistance, indicated by the colored stripes. When electricity travels through a material very easily, that is, if the resistance is low, that material is a conductor. If electricity has a hard time passing through, or if the resistance is high, that material is a resistor. When you measure whether a component is a conductor or a resistor, what you're measuring are ohms, the units of electrical resistance. There is one other family of materials which are neither conductors or resistors. They're a little bit of both, so they're called semiconductors. Probably the most important semiconductor material and the use of resistance in the modern world is the silicon chip, which is the basis of computers. Guiding tiny electric currents through microscopic channels can only be done with the resistance of the chips themselves. By the way, can you see what's wrong with this sign? <laughs>